welcome to the 14th episode of Let's Learn Redstone. I'm your host, Am Ledoux, and this episode we're going to take a look at one of the more niche mechanics, that is, burned out torches. This mechanic is seeing more and more use as time goes on, because it kind of replaces observers in a way. But how would a torch ever replace an observer? Well, that is because they both notice block updates. If you update the block that the observer is looking at, you will receive an output, the same way as if you update a block next to the torch, it will reset the torch, causing it to burn itself out again. So in this example, the torch is strongly powering the block above it, which is powering the dust that is turning off the torch. So it turns itself on and off so quickly that it burns itself out. If you toggle the torch too fast, the game just burns out the torch, assumingly for lag purposes. But this isn't limited to just placing blocks. It can notice crops growing and all kinds of other things. Basically any change that will update a block next to the torch. So a redstone torch can basically see anything that an observer can. In Bedrock, observers notice changes in block updates. Whereas in Java, observers notice changes in block state. Now these things are very similar, just ever so slightly different. But for practical applications of the burned out torch, all we really care about is like sugarcane, bamboo, and grass. All three of these farms are super basic and simple, yet really expensive because they use tons of observers. But we can replace all of the observers with a simple redstone torch to notice when the sheep eats the grass or when the crops grow. But just know that there are tons of things that can refresh a burned out torch. Now burned out torches are not going to replace all observers. Even though they can notice the same things that observers can, they're omnidirectional, meaning that if any of the six blocks that are touching the redstone torch receive an update, the torch will refresh. Whereas an observer just has a single direction. You know, it's only looking where its face is for a block update. If you update one of the blocks next to or behind the observer, nothing happens. Now there are some key differences between torches and observers, but one way to visualize a burned out torch is to picture it like an observer that has six faces. It has a face on every single side of its block, so it's looking all around and up and down and everywhere. Now to prevent a torch from burning out, all we have to do is add a little bit of delay in between the torch turning itself off. Now on bedrock, this delay can be minimal. It just requires a single repeater or a single comparator. But on Java, a torch will still burn out even with a slow clock. So you will need a much longer delay between torch activations if you're playing on Java, which is really frustrating because we have this super simple, nice clock that we can use here on Bedrock. And that's one really great thing about Bedrock is that our torches don't burn out from slow clocks. A torch doesn't actually need to be on the side of a block in order to burn it out. That's just the most compact way to do it. But we could put the torch on top of a block and just loop the redstone back around or have another super fast clock to turn it off. Now one really interesting thing is if we break the redstone, it resets the torch. I have no idea why this works or how the torch sees that the redstone loop is now broken. Because as far as I know, dust doesn't update, you know, dust farther down the line if you change or break it. But we could also make this more compact simply by adding a target to redirect the redstone. And if you wanted to use this in a custom machine, what I would probably do is just use a piston piston activating will refresh the torch, even if that piston isn't moving a block. The piston itself would be enough to update the torch. And really, there's a ton of different ways that you can update the torch. It's not limited to placing or moving blocks. You could use redstone. You know, basically anything that updates a block will refresh the torch. Which brings us to some of the more practical applications for this mechanic. The first of which being on wool farms to replace the observers with a redstone torch. When the grass is eaten or when it grows, the torch will notice it and cause it to refresh, which will then activate the dispenser to shear the sheep. And because this is omnidirectional, you could have a grass block on both sides of the torch with a sheep on top. The torch is strongly powering the dispenser, causing the infinite loop, and of course the dispenser has some shears inside to shear the sheep. And even though it activates multiple times, that doesn't actually affect anything at all. Similarly, we can use this with sugarcane and bamboo. As the crops grow up next to the torch, the torch will notice the update and refresh itself, causing the piston to harvest your crops. And we could just run this off, you know, have a single torch for an entire row of sugarcane or bamboo. 
but in the same way as using a single observer to activate an entire farm, that wouldn't be quite as efficient since some of the crops would grow to max before it gets harvested. Or if you wanted to use this mechanic in a different way, we can actually see how many activations we get simply by attaching this to a couple of droppers. And we can see that we get seven activations, at least here on Bedrock. I'm not sure how many you get on Java, I would assume it's similar. But I actually don't think you could trigger droppers using a burned out torch because Java droppers need to be slower. And since seven activations for a clock is so unique, the first thing that comes to mind is a prize dispenser. However, there is something really important that you need to note if you are using this in custom machines. Now back in the day, these would activate any time you loaded the area. So it was like a notification that the area has been loaded. But now this is no longer the case. Regardless of where the chunks are, they won't activate. However, if you log out and then log back in, upon world load, they will activate. So if you use this as a prize dispenser, you would need a fail safe to make sure it doesn't activate just because someone logged into the world. But this also means that you could use this mechanic to activate something one time upon world load. So anytime the world is loaded, this would activate. So it can be kind of hard to figure out how we would use this in custom redstone. But for stuff like wool farms or sugarcane or bamboo, these don't care if it activates upon world load. You know, a sheep getting sheared an extra time won't actually do anything. The shears won't even take damage. So we can just replace all of the observers with a torch. And since the torches are omnidirectional, you could have one torch per two sheep if you wanted to. Now for sugarcane and bamboo, it's actually a good thing that it activates upon world load. Because if you only had like one torch controlling an entire farm, well some of the crops would grow to max and no longer be able to grow. But at least they would get harvested when you loaded the world. So for max efficiency, you would want to place a torch every three or four bamboo or sugarcane. But since the torch needs to be in the front, it will reduce the total volume of the bamboo or sugarcane. But that is a small price to pay to get rid of an entire row of observers. It's actually really exciting to me seeing more and more people use burned out torches in their farms. I always loved this super niche mechanic, and it was one of the first things I ever learned about Minecraft Redstone. You know, like 14 years ago, back when Java was in beta and hadn't even been released yet, the first time I played with Redstone, I burned out a torch. And I was like, ooh, there has to be something you can do with this. Like, this is so cool. But throughout the years, the best thing I ever really found was like a chunk loader. Or not like a thing that loads chunks, but a thing that activates when the chunk is loaded. And now that's not even a thing anymore. Now it's just like, upon world load, it will activate. So it's just really exciting to me seeing that more and more people are using these, not only in farms, but in everyday farms that we all build. But that's all we got for this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, share, and subscribe. Be sure to leave a comment, even if it's just to say hi. Always remember that you are totally awesome. And above all, don't forget to have fun. Bye-bye.